Hello, uh, in the lesson number six, uh, we're going to discuss uh, variables blocks and the math blocks. Uh, first, uh, we're going to focus on the variables. And as you can see, our uh, designer space is again preset. Uh, since there are two uh, types of variables, global and local, uh, we also split our designer space into the global section. We have a button for the global that's going to execute uh, uh, our commands related to global variables. And then we have a label that's going to display whatever result there is. And then again, there's a local button that's going to execute uh, whatever commands we have associated with the local variable. and its corresponding display underneath. So, first of all, before we go into a little bit more details, uh, variables, as the name states, are essentially parameters that uh, change their value uh, as we execute our codes. Um, although it does not necessarily have to be a numerical value it can also be a text uh, most likely we're going to be using uh, in, in most instances we're going to be using uh, numerical uh, variables so as it's already stated in the design space uh, in the app inventor there are two kinds two types of uh, variables global and local and uh, we're going to explain uh, what is the difference between them? Global variable is the one that is defined for the whole project space and uh, any component, uh, any invent handler that we may have into our code or into our project space can access and use this global variable. Local variable, on the other hand, as the name says again, is uh, located just for the particular uh, command and it's uh, defined and used only within that uh, particular instance and it's not accessible and available for the rest of the code for the rest of the project space so let's take a look uh, there are not that many options in the drawer that is related to the variables we see that uh, for the global one we need to initiate it so let's start with the global then if we have the global variable uh, we can change the name by simply typing in whatever name we want for the variables so let's say we use the counter and uh, since we use the counter uh, we can use a uh, basically example of uh, of a game say if you have a, a code that is essentially some sort of a game uh, you're going to have a global counter that's going to keep uh, your score, right? So there might be within the game different uh, event handlers depending on what you do in the game and depending what you do in the game uh, allows you to score a certain number of points and there's going to be a global variable counter that would keep track of all, of all of these points. But before we can use global counter, we need to define it we need to initialize it. So let's say we're going to set our counter global variable to zero. So we need a constant here, right? And let's say we set it to zero. And uh, let's say when we click uh, the global button, we want to do something with this uh, global variable, right? So we're going to go to the global button here, click. I uh, use the event handler when the global button is clicked right here and what do we want to do uh, we want to set this counter to increment by one every time this button is clicked right now to access set and get uh, off of the global variable, all we need to do is only to hover our mouse over it and we get these options so we can either get this variable or we can set it since we want to set it, we're going to grab it from here right? and what do we want to set it to? we want to set it 
to whatever is the current uh, value of the counter and then increment by one which means that we need to use math right to add one so we're going to use right here addition what do we need we need the current one so we're going to hover here again get whatever is the current global counter value and then we're just going to add a constant which is going to be one so let's see copy here say plus one and at the end we want to display that current value of the counter uh, at the label global label so right so we want to go to global label click there we want to set the global label text right but we said before we can pick anyone here and just uh, from the drop down menu select text and we want to set the global label text to the current value of this variable global counter so we're going to hover here again and we want to get the global counter value and display it right so and this is simple exercise to check our to form uh, initialize and uh, check our uh, global variable so let's just check it quickly every time we click this button we should increment uh, in one right we start from zero so first time we click should be one second time we click two and so on every time we click it's going to increment by one right before we move on to the local one uh, note that uh, initialize global variable is a standalone command so this command can be positioned anywhere in our project space and it is essentially its sole purpose is to initialize this global variable also when you hover over its note that in the get and set commands get expression and set command uh, we see that it is the global variable it has a global in the name right note this and then we'll see what happens with the local one so for the local variable right it is not defined outside of our block so it's going to be defined within the block that we're going to use and we're going to execute it when we click the local button here so let's go and get this event handler when local button is clicked right here what do we want to do uh, first we need to initialize our local variable right so let's go to the variables and we're gonna say initialize right here we can choose a name for our local variable as well and it can be any name but I just want to show you that you can have uh, local and global variables in the same code that have the same name and it's still everything's fine because there's no confusion about that so let's call this counter as well the difference is this is the global counter this is the local counter so let's say if we keep this analogy with the game if you do something special in the game very specific you can get extra points and in this case within this block within this event handler you would have another counter that would just uh, take a score of your extra points which would then they would need to be passed onto the global counter as well but but this would be say analogy to the to some uh, sort of a game so we can initialize the local counter it doesn't matter let's initialize it to zero as well so initialize to zero and then what do we want to do uh, we want to uh essentially when every time this button is clicked we want to increment uh this counter local counter by one so we want to set this counter so again by hovering we uh, access the set option set command and we can just copy this really because it's the same thing the only difference is going to be that uh, 
instead of the global counter we can select here a uh, counter this is our local counter so notice the difference they have the same name if we hover over the local one it says just the name get set counter if we hover over the same name global variable it's going to state global counter and global counter for both get and set right so this is how we distinguish between the variables that have the same name but one is the global and the other one is the local variable and uh, what is the last part that we want to do we want to display this local counter in the local label here so we're going to go to local label set local label text right to whatever is the current value of our local variable so hover again here get counter and this is what we want to display so let's see what happens now when we click the local button here click the local button we increment right it's one click the next time still one regardless how many times we click it's one why is this so right so that's the difference between the local and global variable every time we uh, click this button a local variable resets from the start you see the first step is initialized so every time we're going to reset this local counter to zero and that's why whenever we click the button it's just going to increment once and go to one right so there's a difference between here clicking uh, and doing seemingly the same thing right for the global and for the local variable however local is always initialized at the beginning uh, of our nested loop here uh, ne nested block rather uh, let's just point to one more thing uh, here uh, let's say that uh, we want to move this set uh, local label text outside uh, within the same uh, event handler but outside of this initialization of the local variable and as soon as we do that you notice this this is our error we click to see what's wrong uh, it's gonna state uh, select a valid item so our local variable right here is not a valid item anymore why is this so it is because local variable exists only within the block where it's initialized as soon as we moved outside of this block where it's initialized it doesn't exist anymore and we cannot set this value so we have to set this label within the same block where the local variable is defined that is another difference that we have another thing that uh, I want to point real quick is that uh, you see that we have now two event handlers right and then we have a global variable in the inventor app inventor uh, it doesn't really matter what is the relative position of all of these these event handlers can be placed wherever you wish they do not need to be uh, underneath each other uh, anywhere in the project space is okay it's up to you to organize all your event handlers whichever way you really prefer um, this uh, uh, almost closes our variables uh, introduction I just want to point one more thing here you see that you can also initialize local variable uh, in the expression this is uh, this puzzle uh, plug that essentially uh, uh, notes that this is passed into some command so this is the expression and we can uh, use this as well but it's uh, uh, a little bit more or a little bit less actually impactful because essentially what it does we would initialize this local variable uh, and it would be some sort of a two-step solution to to solve it uh, first step here and then pass it onto the main expression over there so it's uh, a little bit less important than the actual command that we explained uh, in this uh, event handler uh, for the uh, local button uh, this would uh, conclude our variables uh, discussion
and uh, we're going to just quickly go through the math blocks because uh, really in the math blocks although we have so many of them here uh, most of them are just mathematical operations and we don't really need to explain any of these so we've seen we have a constant uh, we have comparison here of expressions or direct numbers uh, we if you recall in the uh, lesson number four we've shown that even in the logic blocks we can directly compare if, if something is equal or not equal here we have more options right so if we check here drop down menu we can check all these relations between the expressions besides just equal and not equal here but uh, again this is very simple and uh, all self-explanatory uh, basic operations right uh, bitwise uh, deals with comparison of a binary numbers and th this is outside of the scope of uh, uh, introductory uh, lessons so we don't even need to worry about these right now uh, we need the random integer generation from you know you can set the lowest to the highest number random fraction is the same only you would get the output between 0 and 1 as the random number um, comparing uh, two expressions uh, which one is smaller or again we have this uh, or greater right uh, instead of uh, smaller um, what else again just the basic operations um, then we have a trigonometric uh, again uh, operations all you need to know here is that uh, input for these is expected to be in degrees sometimes it's in radians in, in, in different uh, coding uh, applications um, but you can also convert here right radians degrees <coughs> and vice versa uh, you can check if something is number so the output from this uh, command is going to be a logic uh, and uh, uh, if you need to switch between different bases, you can convert here using uh, uh, this block right here that I believe is the last one, right? So <coughs> this uh, concludes also introduction of the math blocks and uh, really concludes uh, our lesson number six. So the next step, uh, lesson number seven.